Now, this is a, a algorithm that he presented in his book, and it's pretty impossible to read, but it's basically a flow chart. You're trying to explain something, like who won the lottery, um, why does that big white um, circle in the sky change shape every month? You know, you're, you're, there are a lot of things we might want to explain, phases of the moon, whatever. Um, and so the first thing you look at it is at high probability. Is this something that happens all the time? Well, the phases of the moon change very regularly, so we would not ascribe the phases of the moon to anything other than natural cause. That's fine. It's a high probability thing, um, so that's fine. Is it intermediate probability? Well, a lot of intermediate probability things can be attributed to chance. Um, and so unless it's a really low probability uh, uh, event that you're trying to explain, like winning a lottery in, in uh, you know, one in 10 million or something, um, then um, in general you would attribute it to chance. Um, but uh, low probability things, which is his bottom triangle there, or diamond, need to be considered very carefully because here is where you might be able to make a design inference. A low probability um, event, like let's say we walked into um, this room and there were 10 bulls bullseyes, um, well actually this is pretty, okay, we go outside and there's a barn and there are 10 bullseyes on the barn and there are 10 arrows in the middle of, the, uh, of, of each bullseye. We would probably say, wow, that is one heck of an archer. We would know that this is not just random. We would know that, you, you know, t arrows don't show up in bullseyes just by chance. We would attribute this to design or the skill of the archer. And if we saw 10 of them in a row, we'd be pretty impressive, impressed. Now that's a low probability event we might attribute design to. But we'd need a little bit of extra information. And this is what Dembski refers to as specification. Specification is like a little side information. In, in, the term, in terms of the 10 bullseyes, we would want to know that the bullseyes were painted first and then the arrow was shot, <laughs> right? Okay. If we have that little side information, then we can make uh, an inference of design, so we would fall into the bottom pocket. Let's see how this works um, in a uh, little bit more schematic. You have an event you're trying to explain. If it's high probability, you attribute it to natural cause. If it's intermediate or unspecified low probability, you attribute it to chance. If it's specified low probability, ta-da, it's design. That's the design inference. Now the problem here, there's a lot of problems here and we don't have time to go through them all, but I want to go through one that I think everybody can understand even if you don't understand anything about probability theory. And that is I want you to take a close look at that first step where you're attributing something to natural cause. Um, okay, don't worry, I'm not going to call on you. Everybody here who's a scientist, raise your hand. Ra or, or a grad student, we'll give you credit. Keep your hand up, <laughs> keep your hand up. No, keep your hand up, this is, this is, I won't call on you. It's a, you can put your hand up again. <laughs> keep your hand up, this is, this is, I won't call on you, you're, you'll be perfectly innocent. Okay, a lot of hands up, right? Okay, now, keep your hand up. I want you to keep your hand up if you think we have answered all the questions in science. <laughs> That's the problem with this first step. It's based upon what we know about natural cause, but it doesn't take into account what we still have yet to discover. Let's pretend that we are European peasants in the year 800. And we are walking along the bank and we see something like this. What's this? Fairy rings. Fairy rings, yeah. Whoa, this is pretty cool. Well, we wouldn't say that if we were peasants of the year 800, but <laughs> whatever the you know, year 800 equivalent of far out would be, we, we would say that. <laughs> this is really, this is really you know, crazy. I mean, look at these, this circle of toadstools that just sprung up overnight. It wasn't here yesterday. So we're going to try to explain fairy rings, okay? Is it high probability? Certainly not. It wasn't there yesterday. This just went poof. And it wasn't, won't be there next week because it'll, you know, they, they break down pretty quickly. And who knows when it's going to come again? I mean, this is, this is not a high probability event. So it's not high probability. It's, is it low, pro is it unspecified? No, it's circular. This is a specification. This is, you know, this is a low probability specified phenomenon, so obviously it's a result of design. 
And of course, as European peasants of the year 800, we know what causes fairy rings. <laughs> it's where the fairies had their parties. Now, of course, being as that it is now in the year, in the 21st century, um, we've known for quite a long time. I hope I'm not disappointing anyone, but that's not what causes fairy rings. If you go out to a fairy ring, uh, you will look under the toadstools, you will not find any little teeny weeny beer cans at all. <laughs> fairy rings are caused by the way fungi reproduce. And fungi reproduce by sending out concentric mycelia, which are these underground little jobbies that under the right kinds of circumstances of moisture and temperature and light and heat and whatever, spring come up and of course because it's concentric it forms a circle. So we now have a natural explanation for fairy rings, right? We didn't in the year 800. So what we need in the explanatory filter here in his desi divine inference, <laughs> sorry, design inference, well that was right actually, we need another branch of unknown natural cause. But of course, if we do that, this completely destroys the design inference because you've got a fork at the top. There's a lot of other reasons that probability theorists and mathematicians and others have complained about the design inference, but basically no one has accepted it as being relevant at all to biology. And ascribing things like this, like design to biology, is really the crux of the problem. And one of the major problems that intelligent design has is that it makes an inappropriate analogy between the design of things like human artifacts, like machines, to biological structures, which may be very complicated and may even look somewhat like machines. Mount Rushmore is a favorite uh, example of design from the, in, uh, from the intelligent design proponents. They'll point out that faces do not appear upon mountains. That clearly if you are walking along and you see faces carved on a mountain, you know that an intelligence was involved here. Because this is not, you know, the forces of wind and erosion will not give you Jefferson's face on Mount Rushmore. 